Hey guys, it's Kim Pachati and Dr. Kaz, and welcome to Healthy Dog Eats. This week's edition, right, we're going to talk about comfort foods. Comfort? Are you comfortable? We are going to, as fall or summer goes into fall, we always end up changing the way we eat. We change the way we cook, we change, you know, daylight savings time, all the changes that kind of come now. So it's a lot of times where sometimes we get put a little pudge, right, Cosmos? We're getting a little pudgy. Cosmos isn't, he's good. So that's what we also wanted to talk about today is dog obesity. Um, it's a huge, huge problem um, with our dogs. 56% of the dogs today are overweight. That's just, to me, that's wrong because they're getting overweight because of us. We control it. We are the ones that feed them, and it's the most preventable disease to happen. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that today as we're going through, because what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a super super duper comfort food of chicken and waffles. Um, something that's very popular down here in the South, but being from the North, I actually, I've never even had chicken and waffles. And Christina said she hasn't had it either, but she's a full Southerner, so we'll, we'll see what we do. So we kind of did a little bit of a twist on it. We made it healthy. Uh, we made it so it's, you know, if you want to make it for you, you don't have to worry about that extra little bite or, or plateful or something like that that you're going to give the dog. Because we all know that giving that, like my husband, he gives the last bite to the dogs. We had three dogs and he'd always save three bites and everybody got one. Well, the problem with that is it makes him feel really good because he feels like that's how we pass on love to our dogs, like we talked about before, food is love. But it also starts to add a little bit of weight you know, going through, if you think of that every single day. And we're actually going to do a demonstration here in a little bit because um, I want to show you just how easy it is that we overfeed our dogs. But what we need to do first is we need to get going. So I'm going to get the oven on. Um, we are going to do, if my oven wants to participate with me, I need to have one of these temperamental ovens. All right, let's see if we're going to go. Anyway, give me two. There we go. Got the click. I was waiting for it. So we're going to go to 400. Um, I should have did that first. Uh, we're going to do like we did last time. We have our pan inside. Like when we did our salmon patties, we're going to heat up our pan because our fried chicken is actually going to be baked chicken. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that so you can have that crispy texture um, because that's what a lot of fried chicken is. So we're actually going to be using some boneless chicken breasts that I've had sitting into a marinade. And one, or actually kind of a marinade in a brine is what I should say. Brining chicken is wonderful. Um, it's basically a mixture of sugar, a little bit of sugar, or something sweet, like I used pineapple juice since our, our area was pineapples, and salt. So people say, well, if you're letting it soak in salt, doesn't it absorb the salt? Actually, it doesn't. Uh, they had actually had a specific study they had done, it was a food study, that they took the chicken, chicken pork chops, and I forget what the other one was. Anyway, they had like a pound of salt in a package of chicken breasts. It only absorbed one-eighth of a teaspoon. So that would be, that's nothing going on it. So it's very, very easy. What you want to do after it does in its brine um, is you kind of want to rinse it off, pat it off dry. So our brine that we use is the traditional buttermilk. Um, because buttermilk and chicken, that's where it kind of goes to be able to go through. You want to go for at least four hours. You can go up to 24 hours. So we use buttermilk and we use pineapple. Um, now I use the, the fresh pineapple and had a little bit of juice in that. I kind of pressed it down, kind of, you know, got a, there's some, I want to use that word again, squoze. There is no such word as squoze. Squeezed out the juice. And then what else I put in there? And I put salt. And that's all it was. So we let that set. So we patted it dry. So now what we're going to do is we are going to coat our chicken. The standard dredge, you flour it first, you dip it in egg batter, and then you dip it in breadcrumbs. But these are a little bit different than breadcrumbs. Going on the hints of our pina colada, I don't know if you want to call it pina colada, I would say coconut, banana, pineapple, blackberries that we're going to use into this chicken and our waffles. Um, we took our granola that we made last week. And we made up another batch of granola. We processed it down and we got it all through and we've got it. So that's going to be our coating. And then what we did was we took some cheddar cheese and we put that on a sheet pan, placed it in the oven, kind of melted it first and then I popped it in the freezer. And then you just run it through a food processor, a small food processor, and you kind of get a little bit of the grated cheese. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to get our chicken going right away um, because, we, like I said, we have a lot to talk about. We don't want this to drag out. Um, I want to show you a couple different things. So first of all, let us take our chicken. And this is always the worst part because they always supposed to say you're supposed to have one hand for the flour and the wet and then one hand for dry. So I'm going to show you a trick that's pretty easy. You take a Ziploc bag and you place it inside a bowl. You put a little bit of what you're going to do, basically also doing the granola, your breadcrumbs, whatever it may be. I'm going to put a little bit of that cheddar cheese in there as well, just on the bottom part. So that's going to go in here. First, I'm going to take my chicken and I'm going to flour it. And I'm going to keep this hand where I don't touch anything else. Beat up our eggs a little bit there again, sitting there. We're going to dip it in our egg mixture. Okay, so we're not touching our granola. Let it drip a second, drop it in the bag. And we're going to do that with all of our pieces. Get that going real good. And see, the bag actually helps as well because what we can do is we can press the granola into um, the chicken. And if you remember, in our granola, we had coconut, we had almonds, and what else did we have? Coconut, almonds, think, Kim, think, what else did you put in there? Oats, obviously. I think, and a little bit of maple syrup. And I think that was all we did. A little bit of coconut oil, that's what it was. Put this in there. Very easy. And we're going to get our chicken going because then we have to hurry up and make our sauce. And we have to make, our, oh my goodness, look what I was just going to do. That was old habit. And see, the reason that I do this, that was bad. That was real bad. I'm going to wash my hands here a second. Um, the reason I do this is a lot of people will just go drop it in the bowl like that. And then you waste all those crumbs. So, because you've got the chicken grease. So luckily we didn't get the chicken in there. We did just get some egg. So we're going to kind of get that spooned out because I know we're going to have to put a little bit more in here. So we're going to take that so it won't be for a waste. Because a lot of times, like I said, you'll go and you dip it in there. And because you had raw chicken in it, it's got to go right back into it. So let's see how we're doing in here. So we've got ours in there so far. They're kind of going in. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm kind of going to do this in batches. So we'll just put a little bit more cheese in. And then we're going to put just a little bit more of our crumbs in. And I'll show you what I mean about how we want to press it down. We'll put this chicken back down. So we're just going to zip lock it back up. We want to get all the air out as much as we can. Kind of push it through. And then it's almost like shake and bake. Remember shake and bake? Gosh, you grew up with shake and bake. You did it for everything. So you want to kind of press it into that chicken. Get it in there real good. Because a lot of times what happens when you do the baked chicken, um, the, the breading falls off. And we want to try to keep it as much as we possibly can with it. So hopefully it'll be where it sticks out really good. Um, but as I was talking about the obesity with the dogs, while I keep doing this, I'll tell you a little bit more about what I learned. Um, there was actually a 14-year study done on Labradors. And they found that overfeeding them by only a mere 10% they lost two years of their life. That's bad. When we can control that, we want these guys here as long as possible. So feeding them is crucial. That really, really is a big deal. So how about if you let me finish this up? I'll get it all. I'll put it in the oven, and then we're going to come back. We'll get our syrup sauce kind of going, and I'm going to show you about how easy it is that you're going to end up, you may end up being overfeeding your dog and what we can do so we don't do it anymore. So just go watch another Empower Puppy Bite. Counter-surfing is another big issue that people have because what happens is when the puppies are little, you'll stand at your counter and they'll jump up at you and they get very used to it because they realize, guess what, you're getting their treats up here or maybe you're making their food. So make their food ahead of time, not when they're standing below you at the counter because what happens is they quickly learn that, guess what's up here, there's great treats that we want to eat or they want to eat too and that's just another Empower Puppy Bite. Welcome back. We are going to start on our sauce, um, our syrup kind of a thing for our chicken and waffles. Uh, once again, we're making healthy, keeping going into that 
um, whole foods, everything that's good for us, something that's not processed. Uh, we're gonna do, in our sauce, we're gonna do bananas and pineapples, and we're probably gonna hold the blackberries till kind of more of a garnish, putting them more at the end. So right now I'm just gonna kind of blend these two. So we're gonna start just like we always make all our syrups. Um, we're gonna put our bananas into our pan here, and then put into some pineapple. And this is a fresh pineapple. We don't want to use canned pineapple because there's so much sugar. Um, a lot of canned fruit is where they add so much additional sugar to it. So always use fresh anytime you can. And then we are going to do our next step, which is, as you know, putting a little bit of water in. And we're going to let this go while we talk about the dog food. I want to show you this. Okay. Now, there's a couple different reasons why our dogs, it comes over here from our chicken stuff, um, our dogs are overfed, okay? And we think, okay, that little bit adds up, but even like us, think about it if every morning you got up and you had a muffin, and every single day that was additional calories. After about a month or so, there may be a little roll on the side or a little, you know, jeans a little bit tight or whatever may be. So it definitely does add up and it's the same thing with them. We here at Training Canines, we keep our dogs very lean. Um, you know, our, our, sometimes even when our labs, as they're going home, they look a little bit lanky because we want to get them used to that way from the start. We want the dogs, you know, fat puppies aren't, aren't the way to go. I know they're all cute and they're roly-poly and it's all fun, but you know what? They don't need that extra on their joints. They don't need it. And it just inhibits that the new owners to continue feeding all those amounts. Because once a dog gets about a year old, their cal caloric requirements are much less than they were when they're puppies. Puppies often eat three times as much as an adult dog. I mean, it's crazy how much puppies eat, um, really is. But as I was talking about, now let's say for example, you've got your dog food. Every dog food, you check yours, how many calories it has. They range anywhere from three to 500. So that could be a factor. Maybe your dog needs to have less uh, caloric food. And I'm not talking low maintenance and all that kind of stuff because a lot of times, or people, they'll say, oh, well, I'm just going to cut back on this food. Well, by cutting back on this food, you're cutting back on the nutrients that your dog may be required to have. So first place to start when you're doing this, keep them on the food you have, but look and make sure for your dog, you can, there's lots of ways online and we'll put it, we'll find the links for you and put them up with this as well where you can go and take your dog's weight, find out it's, you know, metabolic range, um, find out what how, the amount of calories that that dog actually should be having for that individual dog. If you think about it and put this even in more perspective for you, if you have a 10 pound dog and they're just one pound overweight, that is basically 10% of his body weight, okay? That is the same as equivalent to a 150 pound person being 15 pounds overweight. Now it seems a lot more different, doesn't it? So there you go. So how do you measure your dog's food? We in the baking industry, from being a pastry chef, everything, and a lot of times in regular cooking as well, we do everything by weight. So we have a scale, we have to weigh it out. So right now I've got our scale hooked up to grams. Um, it's already teared out, so our bowl is zero. So when I put this in here, it's good to be, it basically, I don't know if they count, I'm gonna turn it around, see if I can do it this way and if it's gonna got it register. Okay, you can see where it's zero. So I'm gonna scoop out, watch how I scoop out my food. Okay, I'm scooping out right now, I'm leveling it off. My goal is 128 grams is one cup of food. So let's see where we are. Look what that weighed out to be. And that was a cup, you saw how I weighed it out. That is 142 grams, so, or 143. So basically that's 15 grams over what my dog should get a day. What if I'm doing that two times a day or three times a day, times seven times a week? Let, let's just figure it out for, let's see, where's my phone at? I think my phone is right here. Let's figure this out real quick and just see. So if we say, calculator here please, if we say 15, let's say we're feeding him two times, so that's times two, that's 30 grams, all right? So then we're going to turn around and we're going to say, uh, let's times that by seven times a, or seven days a week. That's an extra 210 grams, which is almost a cup and a half more of food per week that you're giving your dog. So if that food was 400 calories, that's 600 calories a week you've just added to your dog's food just because you're not measuring. And look at what I had it at. We'll do it again. I'll show you how easy it is. 
I'm getting a cup out. I'm just shaking up. You'd say, okay, that's a cup, right? Let's see what this one weighs out to be. 137. That's how easy it is to do it. Now, the proper way, as we did in baking, you always have to level the top. And sometimes this is, you know, we may end up with this as well. So let's scoop it off. You take a flat edge, you go at an angle, and you scoop off the top, all right? There's a level cup. Let's see what that comes in at. 108, so we actually a little bit short on that one. So you see just how much of a difference it is by weighing your dog's food. And if you really are concerned about it and do have a weight issue, it may be worth it just to invest in the scale and weigh out your dog's food instead of relying just on a visual of using the cup. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I think it's, it's, it really is an eye-opener when you stop and you look at you know, what it is and, and how it happens. So we'll put that stuff away over now. And we're going to let our sauce, I need to turn it up here a bit because I didn't have it up very high. So we need to let this go for a little bit. Our chicken is still cooking. Um, and we'll talk just a little bit about, before I go ahead and start with the waffles and everything, let's talk a little bit about what you can do um, if your dog is overweight. And kind of like how we just said, watch the food at first. See how you're giving your dog. Don't free feed your dog. Free feeding the dog gives them the opportunity that they can eat whatever they want, whenever they want. And once again, if they're not eating on schedule, they're not using the bathroom on schedule. So if you find that, you know, don't immediately say, you know, if people say, okay, well, you gotta cut your calories and you have to start exercising. Well, you really can't do that with the dog because when you cut that, you're pulling the nutrients away that they need. So you need to say, okay, well, if I'm gonna cut that, what other nutrients can I stick back into there? And that comes back into cooking or topping your kibble with various different things. Well, what, what helps lose weight? What helps, what are good things for us? Obviously whole foods, and foods with lots of antioxidants. Bananas, great for the immune system. Pineapple, great for the dogs. Blackberries, blackberries are a huge cancer fighter for people and for dogs. So there's little things that we can add to give those extra nutrients to our dogs if we've got to cut back just a little bit. A lot of times people say, oh, do it 25%. Some people say do 10%. Every dog is different. Just like you and you're different and I'm different and Christina's different and Cosmos is different. Everybody has their own metabolic rate. So do a little bit of homework. If you find out that your dog, you just can't simply control it, first thing you want to do is make sure you get your dog's thyroid tested. We want to make sure that it's not a problem with them physically. Um, being overweight can cause diabetes, pancreatitis, uh, early death, as we've talked about. And this is all about, and this show is all about us keeping the dogs longer. So what we're gonna do now, let this go a little bit, our chicken's going, we're gonna have you watch another Empower Puppy Bite real quick, come back, we'll make some waffles, and then we should be getting ready to plate everything all up. Not many of us like to be alone, and neither does your puppy, but unfortunately it's something that happens. We all have other things that go on in our lives, and our dogs do have to stay alone. So we have to teach them how to handle it, because we don't want a puppy to have separation anxiety. A lot of times, you know, it is an issue for us because we're with our puppy here all day. You know, we're working our training, so we have to give them some downtime. We have to make sure that they go in and they take naps. Um, and where we're not by them for a couple hours at a time because if they don't learn to be alone now when they're younger They're gonna have a very very hard time later So just make sure you give your puppy some alone time, but keep it supervised make sure that they're safe and teach them It's okay. They'll be fine. And that's just another empower puppy bite. Okay Welcome back guys um, as you can see our bananas and our pineapple are kind of getting up and bubbly and all kinds of goodness going on So we're actually gonna start adding a little bit of flavor now So I want to put a little bit of cinnamon not a lot because we have some cinnamon in our apple base or apple uh, Waffle base apples. I don't know why I think apples And I'm going to put in just a little touch of maple syrup Maybe like a tablespoon of what it will be just to kind of give it a little bit of sweet or not that it really needs sweetness But I wanted just a little bit of a thickness in there That'll help kind of as the juices of the pineapple and so forth go down. And then I think I'm going to put in some, I have some unsweetened coconut, just for kicks. We'll put that in there as well. And that'll be going through on our topping of our waffles. So we have our waffle maker heating up right now. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to make up our batter. You see our bananas are kind of getting mushy. And we want the bananas, basically, the bananas are going to kind of add a little bit of thickness. You know, it's kind of like if you're making um, gravy and you want to, you can use a roux or something like that to thicken it. So our bananas actually will kind of thicken it a little bit. So it'll be a little bit more chunky because we may even pop some yogurt with this. I'm not sure. Have, we, maybe gives Cosmo some of that. Because pineapple, actually, um, you know, you've heard from the vets, uh, copra, uh, coprophobia, or I can't say it right, where the dogs eat the poop. Uh, a lot of vets or people will tell you, how to feed your dog pineapple because they don't like the way it tastes when it comes out. It really is the truth. The only way that you're going to get that is just make sure you pick it up all the time. But nonetheless, we are back to our waffle batter. And what I have is a cup of oat flour. I have a teaspoon of cinnamon. I have a teaspoon of baking soda, baking powder. And we're just going to mix that all up. And then now we are going to add in, we have one tablespoon of honey and one tablespoon of coconut oil. So that's going to come in there. And we are going to add sparkling water. Uh, I use, I'm just going to use the LaCroix coconut. You can add club soda. Um, you can add anything, but we're just going to do a little bit of that. We're going to do three quarters of a cup because that is going to... Now, if I can see this with my glasses, without having glasses on, you know what? I'm better off going to do this. I'm not supposed to do this out of a liquid measure, but I'm going to do it this way anyway. I think this is, I don't have my glasses on, and I think this is a quarter of a cup, so we're just going to use three of these. That is how you're supposed to measure liquid. This is how you're supposed to measure dry, so, but don't tell anybody I'm cheating. We're going to get three quarters of a cup of that. And that just makes it a little bit fluffier, a little bit lighter than as if you use milk. And then we're going to add in one beaten egg with an egg white. So we've got one full egg, one egg white in there. And this is going to be our batter. And you always want to make sure that you let your batter stand for a few minutes prior to putting it in uh, your waffle maker because we want to let it all go. But using the sparkling water or club soda, it gives it a lighter, fluffier area than is if you use milk. Milk makes it kind of real dry. Or not dry, I should say. Just makes it flatter. It's kind of a lot less uh, fluffy when you use the milk. So we're going to let this stand for just a second. Put this down, go back over here. Almost time, Cosmos. Almost time. See how, how our pineapple and bananas. I'm actually going to add a little bit more water because I want it to get a little bit more um, syrupy more so than chunky. And like I said, the bananas are the reason that it's doing it. But we don't need to add sugar because it's all there. And this is keeping it as natural as possible. So we've got our green light on. We're ready on our waffle maker. And all we're going to do is we are, let's see, pan spray. What did you do with it, Kim? Da, 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 da. I lost my mind. I handed it in my hand and now I don't know what I did with it. There it is. My goodness. I'd lose my head if it wasn't attached. All right. Spray that. Spray that. And then we are going to add a cup. This should be, this will actually make two waffles. So we're going to do, it's about a cup of batter per, but I'm just going to kind of eyeball it here. I'm going to put that in. Spread it out a little bit. And while we make the waffles, it'll be just a few more minutes. We'll be right back. Hi guys, welcome back. Well, we've got everything all plated up. I'm just cutting up Cosmos here. We're gonna keep his fruit separate because like I said, he's not a real big fruit guy, so we'll see if he eats it or not. Um, but it turned out wonderful. Our version of chicken and waffles that is very, very healthy. Uh, you can get the recipe at empoweredpups.com. 
You can download it and you can also go back to our previous episodes and so forth and kind of take a look at those again if you hadn't seen it or if this is your first time with us and watching. Uh, just watch what you feed your dogs, watch how you do it. It really, it really makes a difference. Um, I hope you've learned something as far as especially measuring your dog food and uh, keep your dogs it's something we can control and we owe it to them and because we want them here for lots longer than they are. Have a great week and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Thank you.